One of the things I've enjoyed as a parent is introducing my children to the things of my childhood. Sometimes that has been foods that we ate at my house or traditions that we had at our house, places that we were able to visit, and uh, movies and TV shows that we watched. When they were little, they were still making new episodes of Scooby-Doo, so I got to introduce them to Scooby-Doo. I found out at the older service that some of our older people never saw Scooby-Doo, so you need to go home and watch it. Uh, the basic plot of most episodes of Scooby-Doo is this group of young people and the dog Scooby uh, encounter these mysteries that have to be solved. Usually there's something like a ghost or a monster that's scaring everybody. One of my favorite cartoon sound is uh, Scooby's teeth chattering as uh, they're afraid of the ghost or the monster. Sooner or later, uh, they end up unmasking the ghost and find out it's just a guy that's trying to commit a crime, or they unmask the monster and find out it's just a guy trying to commit a crime. But in the narrative of Scooby-Doo, uh, whenever they get that far, they, um, the criminal usually says, I had a good plan and I wouldn't have got away with it if it wasn't for... You darn kids. You pesky kids, you darn kids, right? You've seen it. So um, the first service did not get that. Um, <laughs> But, uh, that's the, and, but what you see there is there's fear. They are afraid of the things that are happening, but as they get into it, they find out that the ghost they fear isn't a real, like the perception and the reality are very different things. Today we encounter in Romans, Paul talking about fear. He actually says that we did not inherit a spirit of slavery that leads to fear. And so this week I found myself trying to figure out how is it that a spirit of slavery leads to fear. And the first thing I thought of was one of my big fears, which is dogs. And I thought, yeah, like there's a way that that kind of keeps me captive. Like there's houses I won't go into if I know there's a loud dog that's going to jump on me. And there's times where I just feel limited because I'm afraid of dogs. But I don't think Paul's talking about that. I think Paul is talking about something deeper like the bigger fears that we probably all share about our human journey. I would guess that most of us at some point have had an economic fear. And by that I mean you were afraid you might lose your job and not be able to pay your bills. You lost your job and feared for before you would, might find a new one that you might not right, be able to sustain your living. Some of you probably worry about your retirement money lasting long enough. And so there's a fear there. Uh, also, I think most of us... Uh, aren't super thrilled about the idea of being alone, and we can carry a fear with that. I've seen uh, people who skip from relationship to relationship because they just are so afraid of what it might be to be by themselves. I think we can uh, fear for our safety. I think of, uh, we uh, lived in the city of St. Louis uh, in the south part of the city before I went to seminary, and if you watch the news you would think that every other house in my neighborhood was on fire and that I had to crawl under gunfire just to get into my house. So, and actually, none of that was true. Uh, was there a crime in our neighborhood? Sure, there's crime in everyone's neighborhood. Uh, only some of it makes it on the news, right? So we had Halloween was coming up and I invited my coworkers to come trick-or-treat at our house because trick-or-treating in our neighborhood was amazing. And they all looked at me and said, is it safe? They had watched too much news and were afraid of my neighborhood. The reality was very different than their perception, just like the ghosts and the monsters and Scooby-Doo are different than what's actually happening. And one of them actually said, for Halloween, what about all the tainted Halloween candy? Now, there are plenty of stories about that, and I read once that they did a study and found out that almost none of those things were true, and there were two that were. One of them, some people who had drugs, the kids got into the drugs, and then to try to not get in trouble, they put drugs in the Halloween candy and said, oh no, look what happened. Uh, the other one was someone who was mentally ill and was trying to harm their own children because of their mental illness. So again, the perception and the reality, very different things, but all of my co-workers were afraid for their safety. Now that can be a physical fear of safety, but also emotional and spiritual fear for our safety. There are lots of people who have stopped walking into a church because of the harm that they have experienced at the church, and then they fear the church for good reasons. Even if the perception sometimes doesn't match reality, sometimes there are things we should be afraid of. 
death is a common thing that people fear as well. And so if you take all of those together and say, why is Paul connecting a spirit of slavery to fear? Well, if you think about uh, slavery, uh, the slave does not have human agency. They don't get to make their own choices. They don't get to belong to themselves. Uh, even if they have a benevolent slave master and all of the power of the master, they still are not on their own. They don't have their own human agency. Then if you think about all those things we're afraid of, if we have economic fears, what are we afraid of? We're afraid that we're going to lose the ability to, to choose the life that we want and to be able to sustain that. If we're afraid of being alone or afraid for our safety or afraid of death, in all of those cases, I think sitting underneath it is some sense that we're not going to have the ability to choose, the ability to have freedom, the ability to be who we want to be and really belong to ourself. And so Paul connects the spirit of slavery to fear, and I think what's sitting underneath that is just a fear of losing our agency. Now, what is the opposite of slavery? Freedom. What is the opposite of fear? That one's harder. Faith. I like faith. That is not what Paul says in this text. He says, we did not inherit a spirit of slavery that leads to fear. Instead, a spirit of adoption. That means we are children of God, and if we're children of God, then we are heirs with Christ. He does not connect slavery to freedom, and he does not connect fear to faith. He connects it to adoption and being heirs with Christ. And I think that also has to do about agency. If we are beloved children of God, we have freedom, but it's not a freedom to just do whatever we want. It's a freedom to live into who we are created as God's beloved children. And that's what that agency then is, is that we can choose. We can do whatever we want, but when we choose the path that God has laid out before us, we live more fully into that life, that gift of life that we've been given. Now, the thing about an heir that's different from the slave an heir inherits maybe not just the estate and all the rest of that, but also responsibility. With being the heir comes some responsibility. And so what I hear Paul saying is, we have freedom, but it's freedom to be responsible to one another. Now, I also find this metaphor of being heirs with Jesus to be a little bit complicated, and here's why. Uh, I knew a guy once who uh, was supposed to inherit the family farm, his sister was supposed to inherit the house that their parents had in town. Their mom died when they were well into their 80s. Dad got remarried. Dad died. Second wife rewrote all the will and everything and gave everything to her kids, and he and his sister got nothing. Now, I would love to tell you that I've only heard that story once. I have not. We also know an estate attorney, and she just said you'd be shocked at how often her job is trying to mediate with siblings who are fighting over mom and dad's stuff and just hashing out the being the heirs, right? How messy that can get. So when I hear Paul say, you have a spirit of adoption which makes you beloved children of God and that gives you agency to go out and carry grace into the world because you are heirs with Jesus, I immediately want to say, I don't think Paul means inheritance in the way that we normally live it out because God isn't going to give us that mess. God is going to give us an inheritance that is full of wonder and joy and grace. But if you keep reading what Paul says, he says we are adopted, we are children, we are heirs, therefore we suffer with Jesus, but get new life with Jesus. Which means that we do inherit the whole mess of what happens in the world, but we also inherit the gift of grace and life that Jesus gives us in his death and resurrection to go out into that mess and carry grace with us. Martin Luther called this the difference between theologians of grace and theologians of the cross. He would say theologians of grace look for God in the things of wealth and success versus theologians of the cross who find God where there is suffering. And the other difference is that theologians of grace call good evil and evil good. It'd be like watching an episode of Scooby-Doo and thinking that the hero is the monster or the ghost that's wreaking all of the havoc. But a theologian of the cross calls a thing what it is. 
What Paul is inviting us to is a journey where we don't try to avoid suffering. We don't think that wealth and power are the goal of this whole thing. But we understand that we are beloved children of God who have an inherited a messy world, but we also have inherited the grace that can change that messy world. And that we are called out into that suffering and in that suffering to call a thing what it is. Sometimes that means you tell your coworker that tainted Halloween candy isn't a thing. Please come to my house so we can have some fun. Sometimes it means that we have to learn that uh, the neighborhood that everybody thinks is a bad neighborhood isn't so bad. It's just got people that have barbecues on Memorial Day and walk their dogs around the neighborhood just like everybody else. Sometimes it means having hard conversations with their family members about addiction or about other stuff. And there's all kinds of other, but in all of that, always to do it with love. It's easy to be judgmental and think we're calling a thing what it is. It's much harder to do all of that with love, which we are able to do because we are children of God that have this inheritance that comes that joins us with Jesus along the way. The end of Scooby-Doo episode, they're always unmasking some messy monster, right? And if it wasn't for those pesky kids, they would have gotten away with it. As we go out, may we understand that we are God's beloved kids, And if it wasn't for us pesky kids, the messiness of the world would continue instead of the grace that we carry with us. Amen.